Let me tell you about the monosaccharide building blocks. And first of all, I should say that there are many of these sugars in nature. And different organisms have different collections. So I'm only showing you the monosaccharides that you would find in vertebrate glycans, which are distinct from the monosaccharides you would find in bacteria or even plants. But these are the ones that we have inside our bodies. And there are nine of them. So this is a good number to know. There are nine monosaccharide building blocks. Just like there are four nucleotides in your DNA or 20 amino acids in your proteins. And each of these monosaccharide building blocks uh, goes by a different name and we also have abbreviations that we use to denote them very quickly. So for example, many of you are familiar with this sugar called glucose. Glucose is really the parent of all of the other monosaccharide units. In fact, your cells can build any of these other building blocks starting from glucose if it had to. And glucose goes by the abbreviation GLC and we often just say glick, a simple little word to denote glucose. And then some of these sugars are perhaps more exotic in their structures. For example, this one. This monosaccharide is called sialic acid. It has more carbon atoms than the other sugars. It also has this carboxylate. It carries a negative charge. And I'm going to come back to sialic acid later on because it occurs in some interesting biological circumstances. Now we have terminology that we use to describe the structures of higher order glycans. These are structures that are made of multiple monosaccharide building blocks. So for example, glucose is simply a monosaccharide and we often think of this as a metabolic sugar. But if you take glucose and link another sugar to it, and this one is galactose, these two together make a disaccharide that's known as lactose, which you might have heard of also because it's abundant in milk. It's a milk disaccharide. It's disaccharide because it has two monosaccharide units. And here's a structure of what we would call either an oligosaccharide or a polysaccharide, which are terms that we use interchangeably. This is a much larger structure which has many copies of glucose all linked together in a long polymer. This structure is cellulose. It's the major component of plant cell walls. And in fact, it's the most abundant organic material on Earth. It's very important to understand the structure of cellulose.